So I was browsing the XDA forum from my phone the other day and I came across a thread called um, Sailfish for XC. Well, it turned out to be right with a certain title, Community Build of Sailfish OS for my phone, Sony Xperia X Compact. Now, for those of you who don't know what Sailfish OS is, it's a Linux distribution based on open source mirror backend and a proprietary UI made by a Finnish company called Jola. If you happen to dislike both Android and iOS, Sailfish OS might be the most realistic alternative on the market. I've been using it for a few days now and I think I'm ready to present you my impressions. A small disclaimer, this is not a review, this is just me rambling about the stuff I found cool and not cool. If you want a video where someone goes through every menu, every interface element, every app in the US, skip this video. So let's begin. The installation process is as easy as it gets and it literally takes 5 minutes, provided you have already unlocked your bootloader. You download the archive with the system and an OEM package from official Sony website, you put them in a folder, you unpack them, then you put your phone into fastboot mode, which on Xperia X Compact works by connecting it to USB while holding the volume up button. And after entering a few fastboot commands, you're good to go. So right off the bat you can see that the boot up is really fast, while on Android for example it takes ages, especially in the first time. After the initial setup, we're greeted with a tutorial, which is pretty annoying if you know how to do all this stuff, but it's really useful if this is your first time. And the reason is gestures. Instead of on-screen buttons, Selfish West uses gestures for, well, basically everything. Wanna quit the app? Swipe. Wanna go to home screen? Swipe. Wanna turn off your phone? Swipe. Literally anything? Swipe. Although the gesture system definitely has a learning curve to it, I learned it in about a few minutes. Apart from gestures, the interface is actually nothing extraordinary and it kind of reminds me of BlackBerry OS X. There is an app drawer, a recent app screen and a thing called Events View, which is basically an analog of a notification panel on Android. Profiles are called ambiences here and apart from sound settings, they also include things like wallpaper. One more thing that caught my attention is remorse timers, which let you cancel the action in case you press something by accident. Pretty cool. Overall, the interface looks cool and is pleasant to use and it gets even better after you apply some patches. More on that later. Under all the glittering glamour, Sailfish OS is an RPM-based Linux distro running on top of Linux kernel version 3.10 that uses Wayland as display manager and also has Systemd. Systemd? In my phone? That is more likely than you think. The system also has SSH and rsync out of the box, which means you can easily manage your packages and install software from computer. Sailfish uses a tool called Pikicon to manage software packages. And after enabling the Mirtos repository, you can install some nifty stuff like Zshell, sudo, wget, htop, which makes working in terminal a little bit less of a headache. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you and say right off the bat that the app support in Selfish West is abysmal. Most mainstream smartphone apps like Telegram, Snapchat, Instagram are basically non-existent or severely outdated. Now, there is a thing called Warehouse, which is a native client for openrepos.org, the biggest user repository for Sailfish. It has much more apps and utilities than the official Jola store, but still no mainstream stuff that you would expect to find in Google Play or App Store. Which brings me to the next point. Yes, Sailfish OS supports Android apps. This functionality is made possible with a proprietary software package called Alien Dalvik, which is not included in community builds of Sailfish OS. But it is included in Sailfish X, the official version of Sailfish OS for Sony Xperia X, the older brother of X Compact. So I decided to buy Sailfish X, extract the Alien Dalvik files, and see if I can run them on my X Compact. And it worked perfectly. After I installed the RPMs from Terminal, there was a new settings item called Android Support. I tried throwing a couple of apps at it, like AppDroid, Telegram, WhatsApp, and they all work just fine. No freezes, no crashes, even notifications are supported. Judging by the interface, it's Android KitKat, which is apparently 5 years old at this point, but most of Android apps still support it and they work just fine. Sailfish OS has root access out of the box, so you don't need to install or flash anything. And the best part of it is UI customizations. After installing a package called Patch Manager 2.0 from Warehouse, I also had to install Patch from Terminal before, you get the ability to apply so-called patches to customize the UI. For example, replace the black background and app drawer with a blurry one, or add a reboot option to the power menu, or add a dock functionality to the recent app screen. There's also a package called Theme Pack support for Sailfish OS, which provides a basic theme functionality. For instance, there's an icon pack called Vidroid, which makes your app drawer less of an eyesore if you have a lot of Android apps. 
Overall, Sailfish OS is awesome. It has a smooth UI with some cool tricks to make you think, why did nobody think about it before? It has root access out of the box, very rich customization potential, support for Android apps, and it's Linux. Not just a virtual machine running on top of Linux kernel, an actual Linux distribution with Pulse Audio, Wayland, Systemd, Package Management, and much more. But despite that, I won't be using it as a daily driver, and here's why. First and foremost, let's talk about the camera. The camera performance on Sailfish OS, on Xperia X Compact, is bad. It's just horrendous. It struggles to focus in any conditions that are not perfect daylight, it does not support HDR, and the quality is very subpar. Now, I want to clarify that this is not Jolo's fault. It's actually Sony's fault. Sony, just like other phone vendors these days, includes some closed source components for camera quality. Some custom ROMs for Sony Xperia X Compact include these blobs, but not Sailfish OS. This problem is also present in the official build of Sailfish for Xperia X, and unfortunately, I don't think it's ever gonna be fixed. I use the camera on my phone a lot, and it's very important for me. So, until that's fixed, I'm afraid I'm stuck with Android. Uh, one more thing I noticed is how little you can find about Sailfish OS on the internet, especially when you need some solution for your problems. The size of the community is nowhere near communities of Android or iOS. So if you have some obscure problem that only few people have, well, I guess you'll be on your own. And same thing stands for apps. The amount and the quality of apps is impressive for such a small platform, but it obviously doesn't even begin to compare to those on Android and iOS. And if you want to use mainstream social media apps, you will have to stick to Android apps or just use Android. There are other minor inconveniences like fingerprint scanner doesn't work, but that's not too bad. Well, say you don't care about camera quality or mainstream social media apps. If you install Sailfish OS, will your phone die? No, but it will be extremely liberating for you. <laughs> so, these are my thoughts about Sailfish OS on Xperia X Compact. As always, thank you for watching this video and goodbye.